the, the, the mechanical complications of coronary artery disease, and uh, we're, we're talking mainly about a heart attack. What are the complications? When we say mechanical complication, we're talking about if you have a heart, heart attack and you rupture, say, a papillary muscle accord, or if you have a, a, a rupture of the muscle, you might get a VSD or it may rupture the free wall. Um, or if, if the heart attack involves a significant portion of the, the, the heart muscle, you know, or if it involves the right side or mainly the left side. So the, those are what we call, those are what we call mechanical complications. And cardiogenic shock is a situation where the cardiac output, the cardiac output is reduced. And when the cardiac output is reduced, then the patient is gonna have cold, clammy extremities that might be hypotensive. A lot of time they're hypotensive. And, you know, this impacts mortality. The mortality uh, rate goes up, okay? So when we say cardiogenic shock, essentially we mean, uh, and it's usually due to so cardiogenic shock could be due to a rupture, a rupture popular muscle, a rupture cords, uh, a VSD, or you may get a, a, a rupture of the free wall, okay? But you can also get cardiogenic shock by a very, with a very extensive uh, heart attack involving more than 40% of the, the LV muscle. You can also get cardiogenic shock if the patient has a RV infarct, remember that the right ventricle uh, pumps the blood to the pulmonary circuit, which goes to the lungs and then goes back to the, the left side of the heart or goes to the left side of the heart. If the patient, if the patient have a significant RV infarct, then blood won't get to the pulmonary circuit and it won't get to the left side of the heart. So the patient will also present with reduced ejection fraction as well. So, you know, cardiogenic shock could be from the, the left heart involvement or right RV infarct. So, so when we talk about a, a pseudo aneurysm and, you know, we, we echo is very, crucial in making the assessment of a pseudo aneurysm. So if you have pseudo mean falls, so if you have a pseudo aneurysm, then what is a true aneurysm? So you guys have seen true aneurysm where the, the muscle is thin and it's uh, like an old pouching, okay? Um, with, with, with no contractility, essentially, no contractility. Now, a pseudo aneurysm is when the patient have a heart attack and the, 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 the muscle ruptures and blood seeps through the muscle, but it is contained by the pericardium. So to, to, to diagnose a pseudo aneurysm on echo, of course, you, have to, you, you, have, you, you need to see a free wall rupture. The myocardium in that area is going to be very thin and you'll see evidence of pericardial effusion, which is just blood in the pericardial uh, cavity. And when you do your color flow imaging, you will see that blood is moving uh, through the, the, the rupture into the pericardial uh, space. And uh, you can use contrast echo as well. So this is a classic example of a pseudo aneurysm where they, you can see the apex of the heart, there's a rupture and blood is flowing from the LV cavity across the tear into the pericardial uh, cavity. Um, so the, to, 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 to distinguish this from a true aneurysm, what we call the neck, is very narrow. So with a pseudo aneurysm, the neck is narrow, okay? Um, whereas a true aneurysm is just an outpouching, 
but you have to recognize this in the in in the echo lab because this can i mean you know this can cause uh demise of the patient so this is a surgical emergency if you pick this up okay so all right so you can also get ventricular septal rupture it can rupture the, the septum and the patient who then will present with a, a VSD. Usually, you're not going to see these complications as the patient presents with a heart attack. These complications usually present a few days after the heart attack. So the patient comes in with a heart attack. You know, you, you treat them. Uh, appropriately with, with, with medicine, you may take them to the cat lab, put a stent in, and then a few days later, they, they start to deteriorate, okay? So you have to examine them, you have to do your echo, and then you'll pick up uh, that you have some mechanical complications going on. So they may, they may have a ventricular septal rupture, and uh, so they're gonna now present with VSD. When you look at the area of the rupture, the septum is going to be thin. You see color flow, flow flow across the septum, and it's usually left to right because of the pressure difference. And then, if you use contrast with say saline, you can also pick it up. So, you know, four chamber, well, five chamber view, and in you you can see that there's a a, a, a flow from left to right. Uh, in the, 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 the paramembranous or uh, the membranous area. So, you know, that's the VSD. Um, but you can have papillary muscle, muscle rupture, cordial rupture, um, you know, so again, it's usually a few days after the, uh, the, the, the event. Uh, so the patient may be stable and then all of a sudden the patient is crashing. Okay. Um, 